Look what happened in 2020 with the silver market on the institutional side. 320 million ounces of silver were bought from the ETFs. And you haven't seen anything close to that over the last couple of years. And yet gold continues to be just pounded. If you look back at silver's history and gold's history, and you go back thousands of years, the highest gold-silver ratio ever got was 20 to 1. And most of the time, it was below that. It was 16 to 1 by mandate when it was uh, deemed by Sir Isaac Newton in England way back when. It was uh, near the natural ratio back in uh, Mesopotamia, Egyptian times. And the point is that, and I thought about this, it's the obvious, but it took me a while to think about it. Gold and silver had a, a ratio of pretty close to their natural ratio for thousands of years. And why? And the answer is because they both served exactly the same function, money. Mm -hmm. So when silver was only money and gold was only money, the two monies had a relationship that was pretty close to their natural state out of the ground, the gold-silver ratio from the earth. Now, in eight, now, when silver was predominantly the money in the United States, because we were basically put on a silver standard, not a gold standard. And then, of course, the bankers did their magic, which is outlined in the uh, Wizard of Oz. It talks about the golden road to the Emerald City, which is the Bankers Hall of Fame. And, and uh, Dorothy had the silver slippers to click the silver slippers and come back home and go back to silver. But I won't go too far down that road. The idea that silver isn't money started way back in 1873 with the crime of 1873. And silver was demonetized. So now you've had that bifurcation. And that bifurcation is silver isn't treated as money by the establishment. Remember, as much as you hear gold is, you know, doesn't pay interest. Gold is a static investment. You dig it out of the ground, bury it from being buried, and you bury it in a safe. And all the negativity you hear around the gold market, central banks are still buying it up, left, right, and center. China has moved significantly in the gold market over the last two decades. Russia has a good gold supply. So there's gold is mainstream, even though you won't hear that from many people, but myself and others like you. Hmm. And yet it's not acknowledged as mainstream. But the bankers look at gold. So they went to a gold-only standard way back in, let's say, the 1900s and slowly phased silver out of the monetary system. So if you go back to the early 70s, when we had the first bull market that I participated in, so I'm not saying the first bull market, I'm saying the first one I participated in, we're off the silver we were on a silver standard, but silver still circulated through 64. 65, they start, stopped minting silver-based coinage. But in the early 70s, everyone knew that, not everyone, but most people knew that silver was money. I mean, it was our quarters. It was our dimes. It was our half dollars. It's money. So when the first bull market started, and you couldn't own gold until I think it was 72 or so, um, silver was the place to go. And so all the vending machines, or vending machines back in those days, we actually pulled handles, most of them mechanical, and all these physical metal discs were going in there of 90% silver. So the vending industry just gobbled up all that silver because it was far more valuable than the face value. So it left the market. It was, you know, the law of Gershom's law about, you know, good money is hoarded and bad money spent. So... And I'm giving a long answer, but the decoupling is what's been doing it. Because if silver were treated as money, and I did a lecture on this a few years ago, uh, there would be a different ratio. It would be more toward maybe the classic monetary ratio that was edict. It's not the natural ratio, which is 15, 16 to 1. The natural ratio used to be 12 to 1, but we've mined so much silver out of the ground, it's now 7 to 1. Uh, and yet we're at a you know gold silver ratio of like eighty five to one right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make much sense if they're both treated as money. Problem that the bankers have with silver not being money and pounding that drum is that the industrial side is so strong that that side alone could take over the gold silver ratio and start moving in silver's favor. I say that because. The projections for solar usage going forward for the next few years won't eat up all the silver, just that. But the industrial side 
will eat up more and more. You know, you go back two decades, the industrial use of silver was 35% of the market. Now it's 55% of the market, moving toward perhaps 65% of the market. You go back 20 years when we mined 550 million ounces of silver. Now we mine 850 million ounces of silver. Mm. So think about what I just said. We used about 35% of the market when we only mined 550 million ounces. Now we use pushing towards 65%. And we were using, you know, only mining 550 million ounces today as a thought experiment. That 65% would be almost the whole silver market. So how do you build make silver jewelry? How do you have silverware and what what's left for investment? My point being is that we could have a natural squeeze coming into the market because as the supply chain gets tighter and tighter, um, all these producers that use silver industrially will see the squeeze. And so they'll start to move into buying silver ahead of time so they can't go out of business. So once you have the Tesla, the 3M, the Mitsubishis, I mean, all these great silver users look and see, oh my goodness, our silver inventory is down to normal where we resupply. But my logistics guy just told me, hey, it's a, two, a month and a half out before we can get our supply. They won't go into a panic, but they'll go into a semi-panic. So once they start to build inventory back, and the missing key, of course, is more importantly, what I said earlier about silver not being an investment metal for money. What's lacking in this so far in the last couple of years has been institutional participation, which is pretty mind-boggling. Because if you go back to 2020, there was a guy named uh, Scott Meenard who was at Davos, now known as a World Economic Forum, or better known as that. And Bloomberg interviewed him and asked him what was his go-to investment in 2020. He said silver. And if you look what happened in 2020 with the silver market on the institutional side, 320 million ounces of silver were bought through the ETFs. And you haven't seen anything close to that over the last couple of years. And yet gold continues to be just pounded. Gold has, you know, been uh, bought and bought and bought. Mm -hmm. Silver hasn't gone along for the ride. So I would say, I'm not blaming anyone, you asked my opinion. It's really the institutional side and the banking sector. I think the bank, this is this is conspiracy. I'll just say it because, you know, oh, David, he's, you know, my thoughts are why aren't the banks or the institutions moving into the silver market. The algorithms work just as good for silver as they do for gold. And they know they could get a pretty good pop. You know, a $3 move on a $20 investment is a pretty good percentage. Mm -hmm. and they want to take advantage of those. And we've had several of those in the last couple of years, both up and down. And so why aren't the institutions? And I think, now this is again, kind of on the periphery, and maybe the word's out, you know, hey, let's just continue to pound gold, 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 and let's just leave silver by itself. Because you see drainage out of the physical supply you don't normally see when you've got gold making new highs. You see the ETFs being depleted. You see the LBMA, you know, offing physical silver. And you see the COMEX going from what was 150 million ounces down to as low as like 35 million. And now I think it's at 42 in the registered category. So where's all that silver going? 